once again to the grand finale of the 2009 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz. The contest is between Achimota School and Presbyterian Boys Senior High School, Legon. We have two neighboring schools who have brought their troops here to support them. In the 16-year history of the program, Achimota School has won the competition twice, and Presbyterian Boys Senior High School has won it four times. But we still have a tradition which has remained unbroken. No school has been able to win this competition back to back. Presbyterian Boys tell me they are here to break that tradition, but I doubt that Achimota School will sit idly by and watch that happen. Contestants, as always, this contest will come to you in five rounds. We begin with the first, the round for fundamental concepts. The questions in this round are very, very simple. Please listen carefully and answer the question that has been posed to you. If you answer correctly, three points. If your answer is incorrect, we pass it on for a bonus point. All right, if the question involves calculations, you will have 30 seconds in which to provide an answer. If there are no calculations involved, there will be 15 seconds for you to do so. On my left is Achimata School. Menala Sanyakubo SS3. Queen and US SS3. Apo Frank Brembe SS3. You are welcome, gentlemen. Today I won't disturb you with any questions. Do you have a statement? Go okay. ahead, Andreas. We are here to win. All right. On my right, we have Presbyterian Boys Senior High School, Legon. Prosper Gigenio, Form 3. Asala Jeffrey, Form 3. Edu Poku Frank, Form 3. You are also welcome, gentlemen. Any statement from you? I'd like to say that Jesus is alive. We will begin round one with Achimota School, but I have a preamble to both schools before I come to you, Achimota School. This is your preamble. The periodic table is divided into seven periods. When I come to you, I will give you a period. What you are supposed to do is to state the number of elements in the period I give you and the name of the first element in that same period. And we'll do this twice, OK? So Achimota School, your period is period one. Yes, right. Al-Hassan. There are two elements, and the first one is hydrogen. All right. Yeah. Presbyterian boys, your period is period three. Asala. There are eight elements, and the first element is sodium. OK. At motor school, your period is period five. Andreas? There are 18 elements, and the first element is rubidium. All right. <laughs> Presbyterian boys, period six. Asala? There are 32 elements, and the first element is cesium. Yes. Achimota School, which of the following is a boson? Your options, photon, electron, proton, and neutron. Al Hassan. Photon. Is the photon. Which of the following is a hadron? Your options photon, electron, neutrino, neutron. Frank. Neutron. Is the neutron. When I get to you, I will give you an expression. What you are supposed to do is to find A and B such that the expression is satisfied. All right, Achimota School, your expression, 5 plus 4x minus x squared is equivalent to a minus the expression x minus b all squared. Andreas? 9 minus, into bracket, x minus 2 all squared. Try again. Andreas? 9 plus, into bracket, x minus 2, all squared. Oh, man. I'm not giving this to you. I'm passing it on for a bonus. Yes, Prosper. 
B is two and A is one. Oh no. Oh no. You don't get the bonus. Actually, Andreas, what you were telling me was right, but I didn't ask you for an expression. I asked you to tell me what A and B were. Please listen to your question. A is nine and B is two. You see that you had the right if you had told me those values. All right. With the same preamble, Presbyterian boys, x squared plus 8x plus 10 is equivalent to a plus the expression x plus b all squared. Yes, Asala. B is 4 and a is minus 6. That's right. <laughs> what is sebum? S-E-B-U-M. And what is its function? Sebum is the oily substance secreted by the sebaceous gland and it contains antibodies to fight against bacteria and other toxins on the surface of the skin. And it also, uh, it also uh, oilifies the, the skin surface or makes the skin surface oily. Two out of three. Yes, it's the oily or fatty material secreted by the sebaceous gland. You were right there. What it secretes is actually the oily material to make the skin um, waterproof, to waterproof the skin. And what is secreting also, it's not antibodies, it's actually antiseptics to kill bacteria. Presbyterian boys, what is melanin and what is its function? Yes, Frank. It's, it is a pigment in the skin produced by the Malpighian layer and it gives, the, it, it gives the skin its color and also absorbs sunlight to produce vitamin D. One out of three. Even that, I'm a little, if I could give half, I would do so. Actually, it's a pigment that occurs in the hair, skin, and eyes. So not just the skin. You said skin. That's why you got the one. And it protects the skin from the effect of UV rays from the sun. In the eye, it actually prevents the reflection of light within the eyeball. So you see that your answer was very incomplete indeed. Next pair of questions are to be attempted once. Fill in the blank. So I'm giving you a statement with a blank. Fill in the blank in one attempt. Achimota School. Protons and neutrons are made up of fundamental particles called blank. Yes, Frank. Quarks and leptons. I'll give you two out of three for adding the leptons. They are made up of fundamental particles called quarks. Quarks. Your statement, Presbyterian boys. Electrons and neutrinos belong to the family of fundamental particles called blank. Yes, Frank. Leptons. Yes, leptons. That's the end of the first round. <laughs> Some kind of make a chairman. Wait, ya won't show. Sanity. Wait, ya won't show. Ato? Yes, sir. Pierre. Go off! Hello, Hello there. Ato. Number two, my name is Kanisi. Any day. Near the kind, my son can with Easy Rich point of sale terminal near you, maybe. And I be a Easy Rich ATM. And our bank in this savings and loans company be a bell. Mpacho transfer 250 Ghana cities come back at two accounts in Subanwai. Mpacho ni e switch account number niye. Ni ya uhi yaani oni ya kroni e switch card. Saa namba iwa e switch card ni echi pay. Mama ni usika no. For 200 cities to your exams fee no. That's the fact. Na for 50 no bo on what it. Saa pesa uji usika mani ya. And wani saa ubeko bebi ya e switch point of sale terminal nwo. Ana bebi ya e switch ATM wo. Ube timaji usika nigu card nwo so amunu muwa. Ube timi suwa jise SK every bank. Ana service and loans company biye ben wo. Ana omwa e switch for amwa mutu mi se. Wontu ye sika man kron fo. Kwa je u e switch card se siya. E switch. E kwa impa ube timi ama ni sika. En ten tem so omwa ya muni nina. Oh papa ya tof. Oh ode ode. E switch. Easy banking for everyone. At the end of the first round, Achimota School has 19 points. Presbyterian Boys Senior High School has 21 points. <laughs> Contestants, as you know, round two is our round for applied science. In the first round, we tested your knowledge of very fundamental concepts in science and mathematics. 
In this second round, we'd like to find out how well you apply such concepts to explaining certain everyday situations and also situations that take place in the labs. Please listen to your question carefully and answer the question which is posed to you. If you answer correctly, three points. If your answer is incorrect, it's passed on for a bonus point. In this particular round, partial credit is very possible for partially answered questions. Let's begin with you, Presbyterian boys. But we'll start with the preamble. So I'll give you the preamble, then I'll come to you, Presbyterian boys. This is your preamble. A bus is moving along a straight horizontal stretch of highway at a constant velocity of 50 kilometers per hour. The windows of the bus are closed. A small boy, sitting in one of the front seats, throws an orange upwards. There is a man sitting in the seat behind the boy. That's your preamble. Presbyterian boys, will the orange hit the man sitting behind the boy or will the orange return to the boy? Explain your answer. A good explanation. Yes, Asala. No, the orange won't hit the man sitting behind the boy. This is because the bus is moving at a constant velocity. So the ball doesn't experience any acceleration. This horizontal component of velocity is constant. So it will move with the bus just as it is in the air. So the boy catches the ball back. All right. <laughs> to a stationary observer on the ground, who is watching the bus pass by? What is the trajectory of the orange? I'm expecting an explanation for your answer. Yes, Al Hassan. The trajectory will be a parabola. This is because from the stationary observer, he sees the ball to be thrown with both a horizontal and vertical component. So the ball moves. The ball moves. With Add something, Andreas. The ball goes up and follows the parabolic path and lands back into the hand of the boy. So that um, the person, the person outside the bus on the street. We we'll see the ball going up and coming. Um, Why? Going because because the, the, bus the, bus uh, the, ball, the ball has um, a I'll give you the mark for the combined answer. There is both a constant horizontal velocity in addition to the vertical component given by the bo a boy as he threw the ball. All right, to both schools, an N or a container contains 10 identical balls of which six are black and four white. That's your preamble. So now, Presbyterian boys, two balls are drawn from the end without replacement. Find the probability both balls are of the same color. Yes, Prosper. Seven over 15. That's right. <laughs> At Motor School, with the same preamble, two balls are drawn with replacement from the end. Calculate the probability both balls are of different colors. Yes, Andreas. 12 over 25. That's right. <laughs> Presbyterian boys, answer this question in one attempt. Give the systematic name of the alkanoic acid associated with ants. Frank. Metanoic acid. That's right. Of course, the trivial name is formic acid. All right. Achimota School, give the systematic name of any there are possibilities so of any alkanoic acid obtained from the fat of goats. Yes, Andreas. Hexanoic acid. Hexanoic acid. <laughs> the trivial name is caproic acid. And as, as you probably know, there are others. For example, there is capiric acid, which is octanoic acid, and there's capric acid, which is decanoic acid. Very interesting indeed. All right. Presbyterian boys, over reproduction is necessary for evolution. Do you agree with this statement? I need an explanation. Yes, Frank. Madam, I agree with this statement because when there's over production, over reproduction, more organisms will be produced and there are scarce resources to support all these organisms. So therefore, there will be competition between them and some organisms will have favorable variation which will make them more suited to that kind of environment, other than the others. So those with the favorable conditions who, who are suited to it will be like, will live, they will survive in it. That's the survival of the fittest. And they will give birth and transfer their, 
they are, they are characteristics to their offspring, and this is known as the natural selection. All right. <laughs> Sexual reproduction is more important than mutation in bringing about natural selection. Do you agree with the statement? I need an explanation. Al Hassan. This, I, I agree. This is because sexual reproduction, in sexual reproduction, there is crossing over, and this brings about variation. Moreover, mutation normally leads to unfavorable characteristics, which, which would not benefit the organism. But in sexual reproduction, the variations will lead to hybrid vigor, which will help the organisms. Anything else? Yes, Andrea, add something. Sexual reproductive fertilization in sexual reproductive is also a matter of chance. So there's more variation and evolution can occur. Okay, Anything else? I'll give you two out of three. Everything you said was true, except that you did not notice that mutation is a very slow process. If you were relying on mutation, it would take forever. Whereas reproduction is a faster process for bringing about variation. Presbyterian boys, PQRS is a rectangle with vertices P coordinates 1, 0, Q coordinates 2, 0, and R coordinates 2, 3. Find the coordinates of S. Yes, Asala. 1, 3. That's right. A, B, C, D is a rectangle with vertices. A coordinates negative 3, negative 3. B coordinates 5, negative 3 and C coordinates 5, 5. Find the coordinates of the vertex D. Yes, Al Hassan? Negative 3, 5. Yes. <laughs> Presbyterian boys, please answer this in one attempt. In a column chromatography, in which the glass tube is packed with cellulose and eluted with butanol, which is the stationary phase and which is the moving phase? Yes, Frank. The cellulose is the stationary phase and the butanol is the uh, mobile phase. Two out of three. Yes, butanol is the moving phase. The stationary phase is actually water in the cellulose. Water in the cellulose. Achimota School. In the mass spectrometer, all atoms are capable of forming doubly charged ions, except one atom. Which atom is this and why? One attempt. Yes, Al Hassan. Hydrogen. This is because it, it has only one electron. Yes. <laughs> this is the end of the second round. At the end of the second round, Achimota School has 39 points. Presbyterian Boys Senior High School has 40 points. <laughs> Round three is our problem of the day. So far, the questions you've seen have not taken too much of your time. 30 seconds maximum. The problem of the day is more involved, so we expect that it will engage you for a longer period. From the time I ask you to begin, you have three minutes in which to provide an answer to the problem of the day. The problem of the day is worth 10 points. Let's turn over our sheets and read the problem of the day together. A man repays an interest-free loan in monthly installments. He repays 20 Ghana CDs the first month, 22 Ghana CDs the second month, and the repayments continue to rise by 2 Ghana CDs each month until the loan is repaid. The final monthly repayment is 114 Ghana CDs. First, find the number of months taken to repay the loan. And second, find the total amount repaid. Contestants, this is your problem of the day. Good luck, you may begin. Please 
representative from your school to present your answer on the whiteboard. The contestants have presented their answers. Before we award the marks, let's look at the ideal solution from our consultants. This problem of the day is an application of the mathematics of sequences to financial matters. All right, so we have a sequence, 20, 22, 24, all the way to 114. These are the payments made. The sequence is an arithmetic progression with first term 20 and common difference 2. So we'll say we'll use the normal terminology. A is 20 and D is 2. So for the first part of the question, to find the number of months taken to repay the loan, we'll let the number of months taken be N. So we have a relation. UN is equal to 20 plus N minus 1 times 2. 2 is the D because the payments were increased regularly by 2 Ghana CDs. And this should be equal to the last payment, which is 114. So we can simplify. 2N plus 18 is equal to 114. So 2N is 96 and N is 48. So it takes 48 months to repay the loan. For recognizing that the sequence is an AP, two points, and for calculating for the number of months taken, four points. Second was to find the total amount repaid. We find this by looking for the sum of an arithmetic progression, which is given by SN is equal to N multiplied by U1 plus UN all over 2. We already know what U UN is and we know what U1 is, the first payment and the last payment. So we have SN is equal to 48 multiplied by 20 plus 114 all over 2. If we simplify, we will get 48 times 134 all over 2 and 6,432 all over 2 to give 3,216. So the total amount repaid is actually 3,216 Ghana CDs. Four points for this answer. This is the ideal solution from our consultants and now our contestants. In fact, our contestants had no trouble at all with this problem of the day. If you need to repay your loans in interesting ways, make sure to consult them because they can help you. I am happy to award perfect scores all around. Well done. That's the end of round three and the end of the problem of the day. Contestants, before we start round four, I have something to show you. It's our trophy. Have you seen it? Doesn't it look good? I know you want to take it away. All right. I know this is what you've worked so hard for. And so I wish you well. We have two more rounds to go. At the end of that, one school will take it away. All the best. Round four. Most questions in this round require calculations. So you have 30 seconds in which to present an answer. Should a question not involve calculations, you have 15 seconds in which to do so. A correctly answered question fetches three points. A wrongly answered question is passed on for a bonus point. We'll start with you, Achimota School. Your question. A radioactive substance is monitored in the lab. After five minutes, 10% of it has decayed. And after 15 minutes, 55% of it has decayed. Calculate the decay constant. You may leave your answer in units of decays per minute. And recall that Natural log of 2 is 0 
Yes, Andreas. 0 0.00152 decays per, per minute. Try again. Andreas. 0 0.0693 decays per minute. Yes. <laughs> Presbyterian boys. A radioactive substance is monitored in the lab. After 20 minutes, 10% of it has decayed. And after 713 minutes, 55% of it has decayed. Calculate the decay constant, and you may also leave your answer in units of decays per minute. And remember that natural log of 2 is 0 0.693. Asala. 1 times 10 to the power minus 6 decays per minute. Try again. Asala. Zero, 1.0 times 10 to the minus 3 decays per minute. Yes. For the next pair of questions, I'm going to give you an expression. What you are supposed to do is to express as a single trig ratio, trigonometric ratio, and simplify your answer. Okay? Achimota School, your expression. 2 multiplied by tangent of 30 degrees all over 1 minus tan squared 30 degrees. Yes, Andreas? Tan 60. Yes. <laughs> Presbyterian boys, cosine squared of 15 degrees minus sine squared of 15 degrees. Yes, Prosper? Cos 30. Yes. <laughs> Ashimoto School, please answer this one very carefully. Okay? Give me the location and function of each of the following three fluids found in the human body. So I'm going to give you three fluids. I need location and function of each. The fluids are synovial fluid, cerebrospinal fluid, and aqueous humor. Yes, Frank. The synovial fluid is found in between. Is it? The synovial fluid is found in between the synovial membrane and is responsible for lubricating the two joints so that easy movement can occur. The cerebrospinal fluid is found between the meninges in the brain and is responsible for the smooth action of the brain so that friction does not wear the brain out. And the aqueous humor is also found in the eye so, and it is also responsible for giving the eye a constant shape. Two out of three. You had elements of truth in everything you said, but. There are certain things missing. The synovial, synovial fluid is found at the movable joints. It acts as a lubricant, as you said, to reduce friction at the joint. Cerebrospinal fluid actually bathes the brain and spinal cord. You didn't mention the spinal cord, for example, right? And it protects them from harmful chemicals and from mechanical damage. You mentioned the damage, but not quite there. And the aqueous humor is located between the lens and the cornea of the eye. You said it was in the eye. Fine. And it carries nutrients to them and also helps to maintain the shape of the eye. You mentioned the shape of the eye. So you see, you had elements of truth to each of the answers, but not as full as I would have liked. All right, Presbyterian boys, your turn. Answer your question very carefully. Give me the location and function of the following three muscles. Location and function. Erector muscle, ciliary muscle, and temporal muscle. Frank. The ciliary muscle is in the eye, and it alters the, the, the focal, the, it alters the lens, changing its focal length for accommodation. And the erector muscle is and also for protection. And the temporal muscle is found in the jaw, and it's used for feeding. And the erector muscle is found in the eye, it's used for support. I'm going to give you one out of two. Mainly for your answer regarding the ciliary muscle. That was the most complete. The rest was all over the place. Okay, so the erector muscle is located in the skin. Okay? Erector muscle is in the skin. And it's the muscle that causes the hairs to stand on air and when somebody is cold. You see that you didn't answer that. And then the temporal muscle, you started saying something, but the bell had gone. The temporal muscle is located in the jaw and is used for mastication or chewing of food. All right. 
a radioisotope of an element X with mass number 210 AMU has a half-life of 10 days. It decays by alpha emission. Calculate the moles of helium gas that can be obtained from 21 grams of X210 at STP in 30 days. Yes, Frank. Andreas. 0.0375 moles. No. So for a bonus. Yes, Asala. 4.25 moles. No. The right answer is 0 0.0875 moles. Presbyterian boys, your own question. A radioisotope of an element Q with mass number 209 AMU has a half-life of 12 hours and it decays by alpha particle emission. Calculate the volume of gas at STP that can be obtained from 167.2 grams of the radioisotope in 36 hours. Molar volume of gas at STP is 22.4 decimeter cubed. Asala. 2.24 dm cubed. No. For a bonus. Andreas. 6.72 dm cubed. No. The right answer is 15.68 decimeter cubed. For the pair of questions, you basically had to keep track of the decays that are taking place. So in this particular case, the second question, 36 hours with a half-life of 12 hours means that there are three half-lives in that period. Okay? So if you start, you know you're going to start with 0 0.8 moles. You can calculate and check that with 167.2 grams, that would be 0 0.8 moles. So you start with 0 0.8 moles after a decay, you have 0 0.4 and then 0 0.2 and then 0 0.1. So if you keep track of it that way, you can find out uh, what happens with the total number of moles and then of course convert to the decimeter cubed. That's the end of the fourth round. Good morning, class. Good morning, sir. You remember what I told you about the exams? No fees, no exams. That's right, no fees. No exam. Atto? Yes, sir. Out. Oh. Hello, Hello there. Atto. Can you please send me the money in 30 minutes? Yes. Absolutely. First, get your eSwitch card. Then, go to any eSwitch merchant, eSwitch ATMs, bank, or savings and loans company nationwide. Please transfer 250 Ghana cities to my son Atto's account. This is his eSwitch number. All you need is the recipient's eSwitch card number printed on the reverse side of the card. I've sent you the money. Use 200 for your exams fee and 50 for your provisions, okay? okay? You. To receive the money, go to any EaseWitch point of sale terminal or ATM and load the money on your card or draw the cash from a bank or savings and loans company or EaseWitch merchant. Get an EaseWitch card now and enjoy a safer, faster and more convenient means of transferring your money nationwide. Oh, your puppy Your puppy EaseWitch. Easy banking for everyone. At the end of the fourth round, Achimota School has 57 points. Presbyterian Boys Senior High School has 57 points. The contest will definitely be decided in this final round. Round five comes to you in two parts. For the first part of the round, I'm going to give your school statements. When you get your statement, please consider it very, very carefully and tell me whether the statement is true or false. If you are right, two points. If your answer is not right, you lose a precious point. You may choose not to answer, in which case I will pass the statement on for your opponent to get the benefit of the potential two points. Good luck, let's begin with you Presbyterian boys. First statement. The tropic response of roots to gravity is stronger than the atropic response to water. Yes, Frank? False. It's false. The solubility of calcium oxalate or ethane dioate is expected to be higher in calcium chloride. Frank? It's false. It's false. The sun 
is in the Milky Way galaxy. Frank, true. it's true. <laughs> Two triangles are similar if their corresponding angles are congruent. Frank, it's true. Yes. The statement, neither P nor Q, is equivalent to not P and not Q. Asala. It's true. Yes. <laughs> Most roots are negatively phototropic. Frank. It's true. No. <laughs> Oxygen forms oxides with oxidation states negative two, negative one, and negative half. Frank. True. Yes. <laughs> the stars in the Milky Way galaxy are in orbit about the center of the galaxy. Yes, Al Hassan. True. True. Yes. The anti-neutron is the antiparticle of the neutron. Frank. False. No. The perpendicular bisector of a line segment it's called the mediator of the line. Frank. It's true. Yes. <laughs> the body temperature of mammals is higher than that of birds. Yes, Frank. False. False. <laughs> Photons are particles with spin half. Frank. It's false. It's false. <laughs> A solution containing H2PO4 minus and HPO4 2 minus is a buffer. Yes, Frank? True. Yes. <laughs> Condition theory defines activation energy. Frank? It's false. Oh, no. <laughs> a rhombus is a cyclic quadrilateral. Asala. False. Yes. Shivering is a metabolic control mechanism to generate heat. Frank. It's true. Yes. We are done with the first part of round five. For the second part of the round, I'm going to ask you to solve riddles. I will give you clues and you try to solve the riddle. If you're able to solve the riddle on the first clue, five points. If you solve it on the second clue, four points. And if you solve it on the third clue or any clue after that, three points. In order to solve a riddle, you need to call my attention. You do so by ringing your bell. Might hear your bell at Motor School. Thank you. And yours, Presbyterian boys. Thank you. When you ring the bell, it means you are ready with your response because I will not wait for a response. You are competing for time. First riddle. With respect to reflection, I am the mirror line. For a cone, I am the vertical line through the vertex. Go ahead. Line of symmetry. Line of symmetry. Yeah! Four points. Second riddle. I am a structure associated with the nervous system. The first part of my name is familiar to electricians, athletes, and swimmers. Actually, I am just an elongated cell. Relay neuron. That's right. <laughs> of the several molecular geometries. You may... Go ahead. Geometric isomers. Geometric isomers. No. <laughs> you may not be very familiar with me, but it doesn't mean you don't know me. Have you thought of the shape of PCL5? 
Imagine a symmetrical shape formed from the hybridization of 1D, 1S, and 3P orbitals. Can you imagine the shape obtained by putting two ammonia molecules together back to back? I am therefore a bipyramid. Before I became a bipyramid, I had a three-sided base. So who am I? Go ahead. Trigonal by pyramid. That's right. <laughs> Final riddle. If all pretensions are removed, I am just a beam of light. I am found in homes, offices, hospitals, supermarkets, labs, and so on. I find widespread use in communications and entertainment. Go ahead. Laser. A laser. Here are the final scores. Achimota School has 67 points. Presbyterian Boys Senior High School, Legon, has 83 points. Achimota School, you gave us an excellent contest. You did very, very well. And as I always say, if you made it to the grand finale, then you are also champions. Well done. Presbyterian boys, you did the incredible. Congratulations on winning this year's competition. Very well done. Very, very well done. Amazing. Viewers, you have been with us from the beginning to the very end. You saw us when we had difficult times and when we were celebrating. I know you enjoyed our contest, and so I'll ask you to keep well while we are away and make your plans to join us when we bring you the next edition of the National Science and Mass Quiz. Thank you. We want to congratulate ourselves for such a wonderful competition and contest. Can we applaud ourselves? To all our contesting schools, we say, good job, well done. Even if you didn't get to the final, you still have done well. And to Achimota School, you can be called champions all the same, even though you lost. You are worthy of, of the title of being called a champion. Congratulations. And, and for Presec Legon, you deserve it. For the past 16 years, no school has been able to win the trophy and defended it. You were the first school that won its National Science and Math Quiz on three occasions. And this year, you have been the first school to be able to win the trophy and defend it successfully. We will now call on the, dep the Deputy Minister to give her a short address. Our dear consultants, quiz Mistress, headmasters and mistresses, our dear science teachers, my dear students, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is an honor to be with you today and to participate in the closing ceremony of this very important intervention the National Science and Math Quiz that seeks to popularize science among our students. 
Permit me, therefore, to express my profound gratitude to the organizers for their kind invitation. It is significant to note that this closing ceremony marks another stride made as a nation in our concerted efforts to ensure promotion of quality science education. Ghana is determined to ensure the development of our nation through science and technology. We, the politicians, including myself, should be sufficiently and scientifically informed to be able to make beneficial decisions on the development of science and technology. As a nation, we should all share in the government's vision of focusing on the development of science and technology as the engine of growth. We will not relent in our effort to ensure that investment in science education becomes adequate to create the enabling environment for students to develop their endowed potential in science and technology. We are hopeful that interventions like the science and math quiz will go a long way to continue to improve teaching and learning of science. The competitive spirit it creates provides a positive culture of being confident about scientific facts. It also has advantage of causing students and even teachers alike to constantly review their scientific and mathematical knowledge. I therefore wish to congratulate all participating schools and students who avail themselves for this year's quiz to position themselves confidently as they go back to their individual schools to do even better than before. In every competition, there is bound to be a winner and, of course, a loser. Bravo to the winning schools. What is important is the opportunity to have participated in the competition in such a scientifically healthy, competitive environment. To those schools who may not be satisfied with your performance, this should even spare you on to work harder for next year. I'm hopeful that next year we'll find an increase in the number of competing schools to make the competition more competitive and exciting. I wish at this point, to thank all who have worked hard behind the scenes to put this competition together and to say that the Minister of Education is very appreciative. We look forward to more collaboration to move the teaching and learning of science forward in this country in the years ahead. Ladies and gentlemen, I now have the singular honor and privilege to declare the 16th edition of the National Science and Math Quiz of 2009 duly closed. We would start with the fourth position and would have um, our consultant, one of our consultants, Mr. Martin Eglog, to do as the honors of presenting the fourth prize to St. Augustine's. <laughs> we'll have Professor Asumeni to do as the honors of presenting the, the third prize to Anglican Senior High School.
For our second prize, we would ask Mrs. Sufa Awatri, Director of Science Resource Center, GS, to do us the honors. And the second prize is to Achimota School. For their prize, they are going home with 2,000 Ghana cities. And then the students are also taking home 350 Ghana cities. And the teachers are also taking home 350 Ghana cities. For the first prize, we would ask our Deputy Minister to do us the honors. You will be assisted by our able quiz mistress, Dr. Elsa Kaufman. For the prize, Presbyterian Boys Senior High School are taking home 3,000 Ghana cities. And for their teachers and their contestants, each is taking home 500 Ghana cities. Help.